Uh, Hi, and welcome to Dr. Mix. Today, we have a very special episode. This is completely live. We are going to talk about the kick drum, one of the most uh, asked um, uh, subjects. And uh, we're going to explore equalization, parallel compression, transient designing, filtering, gain staging, everything that you need in order to um, make your kick drum sound better in your mix. If you're new to this, um, if you're new to this, um, my name is Claudio Passavanti. I am a producer and musician, and uh, I'm the head of Doctor Mix, a famous online mixing and mastering service. And um, our mission is to make your music sound fantastic. And I'm here with Dom and Aaron. Hi guys. Hey. How you doing, Dom? <laughs> very good. Very good. We've. Uh uh, have a very interesting subject today, haven't we? I we got a huge subject. Uh, in the meantime, I'm. Uh, I apologize a little bit for uh, for my um, cold. I have a little bit of a cold, uh, but I already see that uh, we've got um, uh, lovely people online, and uh, let me say hi to everyone. And by the way, if you uh, wha if you can hear us loud and clear, please let us know with a yeah in the comments. And that would be very appreciated. And um, yeah, Dom, I wanted to just say just quickly, you're just back from uh, Nam. How was that? It was awesome. I mean, it's Nam. What can you say? You know, it's a great show. Lots of stuff going on. You know, great people. Um, lots of music. Busy. Exhausting. Did you see Steven Slate? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Yeah, he was very busy, you know, he had like so many things going on. Uh, actually, one of my, you know, my favorite products to come out on this NAM was the... The Steven marching band. <laughs> the marching Not band. The march <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you should tell just very quickly that episode. No, it was a, yeah, it was a very interesting one because he was, he was doing a demo and, he, you know, he was trying to get people to listen to some very, um, y the nuances from the different microphone models. Uh... And then, like a marching band, <laughs> j just w w they were blasting in the background. They were playing, a doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, stuff like this. <laughs> and uh, and you know, he, I think it was terrible to be honest with you. I'm surprised he keep remained that calm. Uh, actually, calm really well. I yeah. Actually, I think that it's it went kind of viral that video. So yeah, uh, yeah, a video yeah. where he was, uh, <laughs> you know. Anyway, yeah, anyway, that was brilliant. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Lots of preparation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. hey, listen. Thank you th uh, to Tony Ramos, to um, Chi Rag, to Harold, to Milana. <coughs> Apologies, James. By the way, where are you guys tuning in from? Just please let me know. And um, yeah, they say we want kick drum. We want kick drum. <laughs> so do I. And um, <laughs> how about this? Do you know what? I f I feel a little bit funky today, and I am going to say to whoever shares the Facebook post, we are going to draw one of these shirts. We're going to send you one of these shirts, and uh, we have a way to know how you um, if you shared it. If you shared it on Facebook then uh, we will select from the people who shared it and um, we're gonna send this very shirt. How do you like that? That's pretty cool. That's a pretty good idea, right? I love merchandise. I <laughs> love merchandise. <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should make some merchandise, actually. We do, we do have this one. Anyway, right. If uh, you want more, just let us know. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what I would say, hey Dom, let's just dive right in. Why don't you give us a little bit of an overview what is the kick drum? W what are the characteristics of a kick drum and what are we looking for when we're talking about the kick drum? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a very, you know, it's first of all, we have to say what's, you know, how we define kick drum. Is it like an acoustic kick drum? Is it like um, an electronic kick drum? A uh, kick drum that you can synthesize with, uh, you know, a synthesizer or maybe like a plug-in? you know, uh, samples, uh, there are so many different uh, types of kick drums. So I think we have, um, you know, um, let's, let's, we can use a few, we have a few kick drums right here. Uh, so let's see, maybe this guy. Um, let's see. There we go. Or this one. Okay. So these are some different kick drum samples. I think we also have another one. 
Can you show the the, um, the screenshot that yeah, we have so right there? Find it. So Claudio, can you give me some some level? Let me let me do yeah. that awesome. straight away. Awesome, perfect. So cool. so this is like a this is like a very typical kick drum uh, waveform, yes. and uh, if we kind of separate the different portions, this is like the transient. You know, this is the attack. This is usually you can see that the difference is that it's very, you know, it's very short, and that's what gives you the click and the attack of the kick drum. This is the body, and it basically it carries the low end. And uh, of course, we have the tail right here, which is look how long it will be. And uh, most of the times, all the low end is right here in this section, in this portion of the, of the sample. And this is mainly your attack that you perceive as, you know, how punchy. And this is like, you know, depends depending on the envelope, because there's a DSR, an ADSR on the kick drum samples, you get the per, uh, the perception of how punchy it is, how much click it has, uh, how long it will be. If you get any pitch uh, information out of the kick drum, you know, some kick drums are pitch, some kick drums are do not have any pitch information. They are very short. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to this, Aaron. Yeah, um, the only thing that I would add is that the high frequencies are sort of in this zone because they take less time to decay. The exactly. low end is very much over here because it takes more time for the low end to develop because it's a longer wave cycle. Exactly. So basically, the way it works is that there is the initial transient and that defines the attack. Then there is the middle portion, which is basically the body of the, of, of the kick drum. And that, that defines the you know, tone. Uh, along with the with the initial transient, and then the low end because it takes a little bit longer to form, then it's more towards the tail. So in fact, one of the tricks that we use to make you know if a kick drum is taking too much space because maybe it's got long, uh, big low end, then we just shorten it, and that is a way to make uh, the kick drum a little bit more compact and control the bass that way. And um, we also have another one right here. If you want to uh, turn to Cubase, uh, basically exactly the same story. If you can see, you know, we have uh, the initial transient, mm. this portion. Then we have the low end and the tail like this. So this is the body of the kick drum. I don't know if we can play it. Let's see if this is. This has a little bit of reverb, I think. But if there is a reason why, we'll show you how you can remove stuff like this and basically shape your kick drum. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so this is like, cool. so you can see it's, it's a very kind of standard kind of electronic kick drum, but we still have the attack right there. And we're going to show you a few cool ways that you can kind of enhance this attack, make it more punchy, make it shorter if you have like a bass, you know, I mean, we're going to talk all about this today. Sounds beautiful. So um, I would say, um, well, because this is more based of, uh, well, this should be a Q&A. So what I would suggest is as we dig deeper into this, why don't you start preparing your questions that you may have and um, so that I start reading them a little bit. And um, I would say, uh, Dom or Aaron or both, why don't you start giving us a little bit of, uh, you know, what makes uh, the kick drum uh, cut through a mix and what are the basic uh, mistakes that people make when they mix the kick drum? Dom, did you want to start? I'm just going through the comments, see if they <coughs> have any questions, if you can... Okay, I'd say one of the key things that helps a kick cut kick drum cut through is the relationship with the whatever bass instruments you have. Mm. You have to decide whether you want your kick drum to sit above or below the low end of the bass because those usually are the only two things that are down below the 60 hertz region. If you have them both trying to fight for the exact same frequency range, neither of them will really cut through. You'll get sort of a mess. So you want to cut frequencies to allow one or the other to sit above or below the other. That really, mm. really cleans things up. and it's one of the things that I see a lot of people get wrong. Yeah, right. I will add to that trick, generally uh, have the low end uh, just dedicated for <laughs> to the kick drum and the bass, mm. meaning 
Uh, if you have a ton of uh, tracks that have a lot of bass information that it's not necessarily needed, like for example, you might have a rumble uh, of on from you know the air conditioning <laughs> on the tambourine, which um, uh, or for example, you may have whatever the vocals have this sort of 30, 40, 50 rumble underneath it. That rumble is taking up a lot of space, and uh, it's um, you know it's it's uh, working against the clarity of the overall mix. So one very good trick is to clear out the low end using filters from tracks that don't have any meaningful bass information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I would add to this, you know, you always have to uh, find the correct kick drum sample. Now, it's, it always depends if it's like a real recording or if it's electronic. We always have to define, um, you know, uh, what kick drum we're talking about, right? Because it's not the s exactly the same, you know, approach when it's an electronic kick drum or um, acoustic kick drum. Well, yeah, and uh, and when you're trying to mix in a drum kit, of course, uh, maybe you're trying to balance the kick drum and you're trying to balance the rests of, of the drums as well so that, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, most of the sound, including the kick drum, maybe in the uh, in the um, uh, in in the overheads or or in the ambience. I mean, some some of the tone in general of it. Of course, the body will still be your direct microphone, but it changes w uh, if you are using, say, an eight hundred eight, yeah. which you shouldn't touch <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's such a great sound. Uh, if it's a good sample or if it's the actual machine, then it usually doesn't need to do anything. Uh, but um, but yes, if it is part of uh, of drum kit, then yeah, of course your 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 um, approach to it changes. Yeah. So um, um, do do, do I think we have a question? Do we? Um, uh, I, I'm trying to work this out on my phone. I, I, I have do. I have one, but I, for some reason I cannot read the whole thing. Okay. Uh, from Kofler Cody Ferreira. Yes. I think we have a, it's a. It's a long question. The the only thing is it doesn't let me open the okay, whole thing. Okay, I'll, I'll read it for you. Yeah. Hello, um, call Flo. Thank you for your question. Uh, would be great to hear your take on how uh, to shape a kick to give it more kick characteristics. For example, a kick that has a chest punch versus a kick that has a stomach punch mm. and uh, a kick that has uh, uh, th that thumb. Versus a kick that booms and um, obviously snap, and uh, that it's a pretty long question. But I think that I that I that I that I get the yeah. the su substance cool. of your question. I would say, Dom, I don't know if you agree, but uh, transient designing uh, can be a pretty important part of it. What do yeah, you? Yeah, I, I would say first of all, again, we have to specify what kick drum we're talking about. If we're talking electronic kick drum, which I think it sounds like it uh, because if you're designing it mm. uh, then it's probably an electronic <laughs> one I would say that if you want to create all these um, you know elements and all these characteristics then it's better that you layer your kick drums so I mean I wouldn't use one kick drum for everything I would use one kick drum that is my low end maybe one kick drum that is my punch one kick drum that is the uh, the transient, and of course, if it's a transient, it won't have any low end. So it will be like um, layering sounds on top of each other. Then you can create the ultimate kick drum. Otherwise, you know, if you if you just browse through samples, uh, that's that's also very good. But on the other hand, you can't guarantee that it's gonna work with your song. So if I was gonna create a kick drum, I would add like uh, <coughs> the portion for the attack on a separate channel so that I have total control over it then the body which is going to be the low end on another channel and maybe uh, uh, the kind of punch which is going to be probably around 120 um, um, somewhere around that area so layers is the key for electronic kick drums now if you're stuck with samples or you're stuck with one um, uh, kick drum and you want to m make it perfect then we can go to you know like EQ compression sa uh, transient designs. Uh, can you designer. can you can you please give us an example of like for example the multiband 
um, yeah, the sure. envelope shaper, so that we we show that in practice. Because of um, course, should <coughs> we g use it for a for a, an electronic kick drum, for example, the one that I used right now, this one? Okay, this yeah. has quite a few. Let's say that I had this kick drum, right? And uh, this is not a, you know, the, the kick drum that you would probably want to use um, in a production the way it is right now. So as you can tell, it's got reverb, doesn't it's it? It's got reverb, first of all. But we can we can address that with the transient exactly. design. Exactly. Can we not? That's that's what I, that's what we're gonna do. Um, so I, I mean, we chose those kick drums because they do have problems, right? Uh, we wouldn't show you. Like well, exactly. The kick so <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes we've been told, hey, but you always use uh, um, uh, perfect kick drums, and uh, no, we. We want to use bad kick drums in this case <laughs> to make them better. Let me add a few plugins. Have, have, and have you? Um, so yeah. Yes. So we have. Uh, I've just loaded a, f a couple of plugins right here um, that we could use. So first is the multi-band envelope shaper, and the reason why we use this is because it basically allows you to um, change the the envelope of all the different bands. So you have four bands right here, so we can transient design all four bands. So I can just, so I, this is just the click. I can just try to find the frequencies right there. This is the low end. Maybe I can, okay. And maybe this is a little bit of a thump. Yeah. Cool. So now let's say I want to enhance, let's get rid of the reverb first, right? Should we do that? Yes, please. So, release, yes. So now the reverb is gone. And now you can see that I can change the length of the low end in a completely separate way than the tail of the punch region. So let's add a little bit more punch. So let's use the attack to make the sound more punchy. That's it. Then maybe on the low end as well. And let's see what the click does. So we can completely transform this kick drum. And let's see if with and without. So that was with. And this is without. It's completely different. <laughs> it's completely different. Wow, right? Completely different. And you can, you know, depending on your track, you might need to add more. Um, or you might need to add more low end, or you might make the low end a little bit more tight because it's clashing with your bass. Depends on how long your bass is. Depends if you've side chained your bass. And for example, let's see um, we w if we want to enhance it, uh, enhance it a little bit more. We can add a little bit of tape with quadrifas, just in the low end again. I would try and make sure that we uh, our frequencies match a little bit, but it's not you know it's not gonna it's not the end of the world if they don't. So let's add a little bit of tape there, a little bit of oomph. So again, let's see with and without. That was without, and now with both plugins. So it's a different sound now. Now, if you want to go nuts with it, you can just go and say, okay, I want to make this as a hard, um, you know, hard style. You can add some distortion on the low end. Whoa. And then maybe I can make it or amp. You know, it's y it's up to you what you want to do. Let's add. Or add some. Uh, just maybe I can leave the low end alone and just do this on. You know what I mean? So it's a very, very. So the low end is still intact because we haven't touched it, but the the, the punchy um, element of the kick drum is completely distorted now. And I can also add gate, so it doesn't distort the reverb as well. See, that's not good. Tight. But that's of course sound design. It depends if you want to create new kick drums. Now, if you just want to, you know, just treat it as. Um, Usual kick drum, you don't go that nuts. Let's go like this. So again, different story, completely different story. Yes. Um, let me say, by the way, um, hi to also the um, 
YouTube people because uh, we're both on both channels tonight. And uh, yes, hi Peter Conto, how you doing? And Herb, and hi uh, Ganesh, hi um, Evan, and thanks for tuning in. And um, yes, I think we have uh, <laughs> questions are rolling in. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yes, and uh, so let me see. Um, Peter Contour asks, good length of the tail in the kick for 128 BPM uh, with a sine wave mm. sub bass. That's a pretty interesting question. I actually have a... V um, I'm particularly passionate about uh, uh, checking out the length of kick drums. <coughs> uh, let me do a little calculation. So let's say that you've got that uh, 128 BPM, which is you know quite a fast tempo. So if we've got um, uh, 60 divided 128, your uh, your quarter note will be 0 0.468 seconds. It's almost it's almost uh, half a second. So you know that your time is boom, 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 boom. That at, at 128 BPM will be uh, 0 0.468. You might want to make sure that before the next kick comes in, the previous kick has finished playing. Mm -hmm. So that is one way of looking at it. And, and it's particularly important with house music and dance music in general because... Um, more than anything, the kick drum has to deliver that, that dance floor efficiency. So you want to make sure that uh, the low end isn't too long, doesn't take too much space. Of course, it depends also whether you're using a, a, a bass line, busy ba bass line, or not. And um, so I replied that uh, quickly. And um, uh, Dom, do you want to add anything to it? Or well, well if, if it's a sine wave, I would say, you know, I, you need to sidechain it for sure. You know, if it's a very low end si sine wave, unless, you know, your kick drum doesn't have so much low end. Uh, but I don't think you can get away with not sidechaining the kick drum, especially with dance music uh, to the bass. I mean, um, so when your kick drum hits, your sine wave should be ducked. Uh, right. And if you don't want to give, if, you, if you're playing like a like a nice bass line and you want you don't want it to disappear i would just add another layer from uh, with a sine wave that's a little bit distorted or it's a or it's a sound that has a that's more in the mid range so that you don't completely lose and not side chain the mid rangey sound side chain just the sub bass um but yeah i mean the, the, with with the production you have to play by ear you know you still you know, mm -hmm. have to actually yeah. listen to what's going on. You, I don't think you can name a value of going. Yeah, like this, it has to be these m many milliseconds because it depends on your bass. Depends on the arrangement as well. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's take just one more question before. Wh why don't you guys prepare another trick in the meantime? How's that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know if you want to show, for example, parallel compression or something like that, because mm -hmm. it seems to be quite a popular subject. Let's, let's do like an acoustic kick drum this time. Let's do an acoustic kick drum. In cool. the meantime, I will uh, respond to a question from um, Herb, who asks, um, do you always mix kicks dry, or do you sometimes add a reverb to it? I often feel that the kick sounds too separated from the rest. If yes, what kind of reverb, reverb would you choose? Interesting. Um, <coughs> I think that um, you may use reverbs uh, if the style uh, allows. Like, for example, sometimes in 80s music, they would use reverbs. Also, um, you know, if you're mixing acoustic music and you want to simulate uh, the idea of being, say, in a club, for example, or or uh, anything like that then for example you might uh, want to add a reverb to the <coughs> to the whole drum kit just to you know put them put put the drum kit in a place um, uh, and that includes the kick drum so I wouldn't say that that uh, it is wrong to do it I would say that is not very common to do it P or is it I don't know Aaron what do you think 
I missed the question. Sorry, we were trying <laughs> to sort this out. No, I mean using reverbs on the, on the kick drum. What's your policy? I think it's very important because especially if you're doing an acoustic kick drum and you've got the room lights going on, and you're replacing the kick drum. If you have the kick drum and it's not in the room, it sounds kind of like a kick drum in space. It sounds right. detached from everything else. So I think if you're like an acoustic drum kit where you want the drum kit as the instrument, it's important to have some of the the decay in the room or simulate it at least with like a, a sampled kick room because otherwise it feels really detached from the rest of the kit. Right, fantastic. And, and for dance music, you can use a little bit of a very short or ambient room uh, just to make the kick drum a little bit more three-dimensional, but we've, you know, you have to be very careful. Yeah. And I wouldn't use it for, you know, like the main, like a house track, maybe something a little bit more you know, pop or maybe a little bit more progressive, something like that, so that you get a little bit of wideness. Yeah. Maybe it's not the best idea if it's going to be played in a club because, you know, you n really need your low end to be very solid. Mm. But, you know, if you add a reverb that only has high frequencies and, it, you know, and you filter it, then you can get this kind of stereo um, feel from your kick drum. That's cool. In Pretty fact, fun. you know what I wanted to ask? Um, well, uh, I, th I think Herb also asked what kind of reverb. I don't know. It depends on the song. Uh, but I, w I was curious to, s to know from, 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 from the people who are watching this live or even y on the replay, if, um, if you use reverb on the kick drum, and if so, which reverb? <coughs> and uh, please leave your comments there. And um, also let me remind, I actually had a g pretty good idea. You know, let me remind whoever on Facebook shares this post right now uh, will be uh, eligible to receive uh, one of the Dr. Mix uh, t-shirts. So uh, we can see who actually shares uh, the, the post. So do it now and at the end um, we are going to see who's done it and uh, we'll contact you personally. And um, mm -hmm. I see lots of lots of uh, lots of questions, lots of uh, um, lots of uh, things happening live. Emiliano, hi, Cherub, how you doing? Angelo, oh, this name is in Cyrillic, so it's from Russia. I guess <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to do with that. Hi, Russia, yeah, tuning in from Russia again. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, that sounds uh pretty interesting. And uh, I would say one of um. I see questions about um, uh, Chirac asks. I really want to see an EQ and hear this 400 boxiness business. Um, what you recommend uh, to do? I think that that we can do that. Uh, have you prepared some um, uh, parallel action? Yes, it's okay. on an acoustic kick drum. So n right now we are going to explain parallel compression, which is a very talked about subject. And oh, by the way, we have a podcast where we talk all about it. It's in the link in the description. Um, we have a podcast on that, so you might want to check that later on. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll get to your question, Chirac, later on uh, in a while. In the meantime, Dom Aaron, why don't you guys show me parallel compression? Okay, uh, so so we have uh, we're going to be playing this in real time because we have a kick drum right here. Do you have enough levels? Uh, let yeah? me see, let me see. I think so, yeah, yeah, it's, okay, it's cool. a lot. So this is like a, an acoustic kick drum and we've loaded up um, a parallel compressor, right? Yep. Can, you, can you show you us the mixer explain? so that we understand yes. how it's set up? This, yes, go Freak for it. Out. Next one, um, so we have this is our kick drum channel, which is being fed by Easy Drummer, and then we have this, which is our parallel channel, which has just got this compressor on, which is the vintage compressor, which is comes with Cubase. It's really good for this sort of thing. It's really, really punchy. So if I, this is just the parallel. Change that. Can make it. That's quite loud. <laughs> loud? Okay, cool. Better? Better. Okay. So if I bring it down, we have just the raw kick drum. I can bring this in slowly. And then if I bypass it, you'll hear all the punch goes. 
So we slam it, actually. Mm. We're hitting like 16 dB of compression. And this this actual this uh, compressor also has a very cool thing. It has a punch button. If you press it, it gets even more punchy. Should we try that? Yeah. Oh. So without it again. And with it. And the other thing you can do is you can add another plugin. So if I go I grab the Sony Q. If I add this after our compressing, we can then boost up the low end at say 60 hertz. It's like a pull tick. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. This is actually a free one, this one that I really like. So if I bypass that now, bring the level down a bit. So now, if we blend that in, yeah, again, the low end almost disappears. It becomes really it's solid. Completely different there. sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know something else that you can do if you find that you know your your kick drum is becoming too long because of this uh, you know this is like an Good immense point. amount of comp of uh, um, compression. So I cannot really hear what's going on. So let me turn it up a little bit without affecting your level, Claudio. Right? Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, cool. So see, because we have added all this compression. We get like a very long pronounced tail now. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be audible on Facebook, but can you can you turn it louder just a little bit? Yeah, let me just go louder. Yeah, it is. Yeah, be that's because we added so much compression. We're compressing like 15 dBs right now, right? And of course, when the 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 gain reduction goes down, then we get all this super loud tail. Um, what you can do with that, a very cool trick, if you want to fix that, is add like an envelope uh, shape or plugin at the end, uh, or maybe at the very beginning. But let's try at the end. There's a g you're gonna get a different flavor when you add it in the end or the beginning. But uh, let me go and I usually do it at the end. Yeah, exactly. Me too. Um, let's yeah. go like this. So see, we get all this tail when we tame the release a little bit. Yeah. You know, it becomes tight. So again, now if we go with and without. Ooh. You know? But we don't get this annoying kind of... That this is mm. going to make your mix really muddy. So if you compress so much, it's better that you actually, you know, try and, uh, you know, do a little, bit, a little bit of transient design towards the end. And then, of course, if you want, you can still enhance the sound with a little bit more EQ. So if you want a little bit more attack, you can always use like the top end of your EQ. So this will make it, it's almost like, a, this almost becomes like a hard rock kick drum. And if you make it tighter, it becomes some kind of a metal kick drum. And if you add a little bit more uh, top end, sharpen, sharpen it a little bit, it becomes like a, you know, you can take it wherever you want. So it's, um, I mean, uh, of course, if you have any questions on what you know and what we're doing at any given point, just let us know. Right? I'll tell you what. I, what I will do is I will explain uh, <coughs> quickly. Whilst uh, Dom, how about um, if we just show equalization? Um, what what does it mean to have like that three four hundred uh, 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 hertz boxiness that? Um, that uh, that we yeah. were talking about yeah. earlier, um, uh, Chirag was asking about earlier. So in the meantime, I will just recap for yeah. you parallel compression. The idea is that you use a compressor, which basically reduces the dynamic range <laughs> of a sound, but because using it straight on the sound will kind of compromise it, what you do is you make the cop a copy of that channel onto a parallel channel, uh, which can be uh, like, for example, an auxiliary, or it can be a physical copy of, of, of the audio file itself. And then you can press compress that a lot. Once you've done that, you then add it in uh, little by little until y you feel that the kick drum gets more body and more punch and more width. So, um, 
Yeah, that's parallel compression for you. Uh, and by the way, we explained this extensively on our the official guide to mixing, which is um, uh, a, a 23 episodes um, mixing course that we have uh, currently on Udemy. Uh, and uh, it's gonna be. It, we're gonna change that platform pre pretty soon, by the way. And we're gonna have our own shop where you can buy our stuff from our own shop coming up. And um, so there is a link in the description for that. So, um, so Aaron. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh okay. Tom seems quite excited about this. I, I think. I think we're. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, um, um, why don't you explain to us, Aaron, uh, what, what, what it's usually meant by boxiness and how you can address it on, uh, um, with an EQ? Yeah, I usually find boxiness in the sort of 400, 400 600 hertz range on acoustic kick drums more than I do on um, dance kick drums or something like that because it's the, just the natural sound of an actual drum being hit. Right, this is the sound. So if Dom, or if we get another kick drum. If you want like high volume, yeah. Sort of this sort of thing. That sort yeah. of whistly, woofy sound. If you pull that out, you can feel that the kick drum gets much tighter. Hmm. See how that sort of whistly sound goes away? I don't know if it's gonna be picked up on Facebook, but and it adds a much much more tightness to the kick drum, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Uh it also adds more clarity. So that's you'll often find people either cut that range on their kick drums or they really like CLA sort of boost the low end and boost the top end and then compensate with the volume, which is sort of doing the same thing, because you're effectively boosting either side of it. And then bringing the level down so that that range is effectively attenuated. Definitely. That sounds pretty good. In the meantime, <coughs> I think we got more questions. And um, Hit me. Uh, can you touch on levels for mix down and give a general idea of how loud the bass is compared to the kick volumes? It's from Theodore. Actually, you know what? I saw uh, uh, another question or, or a statement rather earlier where somebody said i'm trying to find that again um uh, that the kick and the bass should be at the same level now i don't think that's quite right to say uh, meaning that plus uh, you know it one it depends on the style uh mm. it depends on the song so uh it uh, the right level is f is what feels right for the song, mm -hmm. really. So yeah. I mean, if 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 you are listening to dub music, there is a good chance that the bass will be quite loud. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to I don't know the Police, uh, a song from the Police from the 70s or 80s, there is a chance that the drums will be extremely loud and everything else will be quite uh, very quiet. Mm -hmm. So um, there isn't a right way to do it. Um, also, another thing to point out is that, uh, yes, the low end, I mean, don't be under the impression that uh, kick drum and bass drum only mean low end. That's not at all the case. Uh, what, what the case is that y y uh, the middle, the mid frequencies is, are still the thing that are the human ear uh, can, can, can perceive the best. So even though you may have the kick and the bass who may be fighting for the low end, you can still hear them thanks to the m mid frequencies rather than, than, than the low end. I don't know, uh, Dom, do you want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. It's, n you know, sometimes it might be that they have the same level, you know, they, the kick drum and bass have the same level, but it depends a lot on the music. Um, so I don't th I d you can't make you know generalizations about this it's unfortunately otherwise we would be able to mix you know the <laughs> same way every time that <laughs> would be super easy and we'd nice. be so happy and we could mix like probably uh, three songs in an hour that would be cool but it's not the case it's not a again it's not only about the bass and the kick drum it's also about the rest of the arrangement how much room do you have to you know, uh, to move around and 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 just um, 
place the kick drum and the bass into the arrangement. Um, yes, I would say that if you want to have a good starting point, set your kick drum so that you don't hit m more than minus 12. Mm. That if, if because if we assume that the kick drum is the king of the mix, then your kick drum should be at minus 12, picking at minus 12, and then you add the bass, and if you do this right, then you shouldn't have any problems balancing your sound. You shouldn't clip. You In shouldn't hit your... Stage, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, you know, start with something like that, and then you, depending on your track, you decide how loud you want the bass to be. It's always good to have a reference track as well, um, so that because sometimes you get a little bit too bass happy, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> or you you get shy on the bass. Um, you know, treating your room. Of course, these are of course these are things that are very very important when you um, mix your low end. So th there's a reason why we have all this you know acoustic material and those panels around us and the bass drops because there's no other way you can reliably mix your bass unless you have uh, you know well treated room that's right so um i will take one more questions from f qu one more question from uh, youtube <coughs> whilst i don't know uh, do you guys want to prepare another trick for us yeah yeah have you got something sure. to okay cool um um somebody is saying um uh, just following up on parallel compression, you always have to uh, be careful about uh, increasing the volume as you as you do parallel compression. <coughs> yeah, I would agree to that, and I would not agree to that. Meaning that with parallel compression, what you're really trying to achieve is to have like a stronger core uh, to that kick drum. So the the kick drum should be free. To to move right, you shouldn't be compressing the original sound. Uh, but when you have a super highly compressed version of it that pushes from the back, then all of a sudden it offers like a constant pulse behind it. So the idea that uh, you always have to level compensate for what you're doing is not right. Um, it's not what you do with mixing. Uh, in actual fact, you have to get a little bit louder because it has to get a little bit of, 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 of punch because otherwise <coughs> a mixed thing and a mixed thing would have the same exact vo volume, which is never the case. Or, for example, I've heard this one before. Let me debunk it. Well, if you, if, if you add mid frequencies with an EQ, then it becomes louder than you have to turn down everything else. Mm, no. Because what you would be really doing then is would you be turning down the top and the bottom, so uh, yeah, I mean uh, 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 doing level matched tests is important, uh, possibly at a, at at the phase where you're studying the subject, but then when you're mixing, you're mixing. You're just driving a car. You're a hundred miles an hour. You do it fast. You do it with uh, inspiration. Uh, you try to get the best sound out of it. And yes, you will get louder. The important thing is that you start with a uh, good gain staging so that by the time you finish mixing, you are not saturating the mix bus. I think an important point from that is to... W there's a difference between perceived loudness and there's a difference between like actual red loudness. It's definitely okay to increase perceived loudness. That's actually what you're going to when you do parallel compression because you have a stronger core again but it d it does come back to gain staging i think um one thing that i do a lot is i either pick my kick or i pick my snare drum and i use that sort of as my lighthouse to guide where i'm placing my other volumes so whenever i'm bringing something into the mix i'm always thinking well okay i know my kick is hitting around minus 10 where is this going to be in relation to my kick drum so i know mm -hmm. that i'm not actually going l well i'm going louder on the end meter because i'm adding stuff into the mix but it's all going to be balanced and it's all going to be okay mm. right. because I'm yeah. relating everything to that w one volume. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I, I agree 100%. Um, do you guys want to show us another trick? Sure. Yeah, Tom's cooked something up. I have uh, I see like a very quick uh, question. Views on Vengeance sound libraries. <laughs> uh, yeah, they 
you know, they're pretty standard, you know, the, the industry standard, to be honest with you. They're really good. Um, the thing is, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful because many people use them. And, uh, you know, they work. They are very effective. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, I don't know what music you make, uh, sure up, uh But, you know, it they, they have pretty much, they've tackled quite a few genres of music. They seem to be a little bit more focused on, you know, um, psychedelic, trance, house, um, you know, th but uh, they do some great stuff. And their kick drums are nicely designed. The thing is you have to search so that you see what works well with your track. Um, because they are very full, they, they mm -hmm. are layered, but they've pre-layered them for you. So if, if you're lucky and it works with your track, that's perfect. Um, so I would say just because they focus on that style, don't think if you do rock music or something like that, they wouldn't help. Because mm, I know a lot definitely. of rock producers like Taylor Larson and Kane Charco, they mix in um, electronic kick drums to make their drums sound bigger than real life drums could ever be. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Very, very good point. Because, you know, I mean, a, an acoustic kick drum wheel, it's, it's very unlikely that we'll have th this low end that an electronic kick drum will give you. you yeah, know, the pure sine wave exactly. sort of thing. You know, it's, it's, it's almost... It's I've never natural. seen a kick drum that's so powerful. Mm. Uh, so if you layer something tastefully, then you can get some great results. So yeah, Vengeance uh, Library is amazing. Use with caution. <laughs> uh, you know, don't overuse them. Um, okay, so we have a trick here for you. Um, actually we're going to use this sample is it is it is this okay Claudio or is it too loud uh let me see play it again hmm. yeah it's good for me it's good cool yeah good. perfect so this is actually one of our our own samples from uh, our the 909 that's right right so this is uh, from uh, the how to produce house music and if you guys got this course, you already have those samples because we um, they kindly were kindly included. Yeah, they were <laughs> included in the course. So this is like a an actual, you know, original um, sample from this machine. But what I've done here is I've dropped it into a sampler track inside Cubase. So basically, I can play this sample on my MIDI keyboard. So first thing, if you're producing music, try and tune your kick drum to your track, right? So if that's very easy. You can just add a tuning, uh, a tuner on your channel, see what your frequency is, and basically pitch it according to your track. So if you have a track that's in A minor, then you just make sure that your kick drum plays on A. Um, so, um, you can find this in charts, you know, it's so easy. And also, you know, if you have a, a DAW, I mean, you can see, you know, actually the actual notes right here. So for example, if I do this in Cubase, see, it's like it's picking at around G. But if you add a tuner, you'll be able to tell. The great thing is that now you can, then you can enhance um, all the harmonics. So for example, if you want to go G1, you go there. And then you can kind of tune the kick drum so that it's in tune with your track. That's a very cool trick to begin with. And because they all have a pitch, right? I can actually play this as a as a synth. So, uh, but um, that's just the beginning. Then when you create this, first of all, try and add dynamics. I always like to add like uh, my kick drum into the sampler track so I have an, the option of kind of creating the dynamics much, much easier because it's not the same if you just place it on the project window and it's just a WAV file. Then if you want to change any of the dynamics, you have to go and trim every single um, audio file, audio event. But like this, you have, you know, a bit more control. Anyway, um, then you can pitch it, of course. You can create glides. But what I want to show you is that you can also, of course, filter it. So if you want to create like a variation for your kick drum for your verse or your intro or your breakdown so you can have something like this and then I can activate the filter right here in the sampler track and then 
I have a different variation right there. Then I can add some resonance and create something cool. Or drive. Ooh. You know, is it loud? It's all right. It's all right? <laughs> okay, cool. Is it like a good Only wow or is it like I'm, I'm just no, it's good, it's good. blowing up your, <laughs> your ear? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, that's, the, that's, that's very standard, right? So I'm just showing you everything. One trick that not many people talk about, and it's a very, very effective trick, is to use pitch envelopes on your kick drums. No matter if you're using uh, a synthesizer to create your kick drum or you're using samples like I'm doing here with a sample track, I can just go into the pitch and of course I can change the course value, that's, that's fine, but that's not as effective because I, if I go up, see I'm losing all the low end, right? So now it's very high, it doesn't sound natural. If I want to keep this kind of low end that we have right there, but I want to kind of make the the make it punchier, right? I can just go and in, go into my envelope, as you can see right there, and I can add an envelope to this sound. That that's a pitch envelope. It's not um, an amplitude envelope. It's it basically what it will do. It will make. Let me just um, make it in a initialize a little bit. Uh, it will actually create like a higher pitch in the in the transient portion of the kick drum or maybe we can go even to the a little bit to the uh, you know low end region of the kick drum and make it higher in pitch so this will make it sound punchier check it out so i'm going to go like this so i can I can even go with the attack like that and now i'm going to add a little bit of this envelope see so it goes high but only in the very beginning so i can make it as short as i want let me zoom in. Okay, so check it out. The 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 low end remains the same. It it remains untouched. But I can transform the kind of uh, you know the pitch of the, the the very beginning of the note. So that's without. Okay? And that's without any filters, that's without any transient designer. I'm actually pitching up the very beginning of the sample. Now, if I want to do something else, I can just go and sound design a new kick drum. Let's go a little bit more dramatic. So I can even make it. You know, you can have so much fun with this. I'm, I'm really addicted to, to you know, this. Um, uh, so you know, just, this, just so you know, when we say <laughs> transient design, <laughs> we mean transient. Design. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's. I, I mean, these are, you know, very simple tools, but they are the most well hidden kind of uh, <laughs> tricks mm. that producers use all the time. Because I mean, yes, you can have the perfect kick drum, but then sometimes it doesn't work or your orchestration is too dense and it doesn't cut through. Yes, you can add the envelope uh, shaper, but sometimes just doing this simple thing, you know, and adding a little bit of, of that, or then maybe you can, you want to, if it's a hip hop kick drum, you know, like you can even create some really, really weird textures. It's, you know, invaluable tool. To, I mean, this here we're using the sampler uh, track, but I mean, if you have like a drum um, machine like Groove Agent or a uh, battery or uh, am I forgetting something? Come on, there are so many of them. Uh, there are loads. Do you want to name all of loads them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> you get the point. Or, or you know, your DAW should have like a similar function. Try this. You'll be surprised how much you can get out of it. Fantastic. In fact, uh, I was going to ask, uh, what is your favorite um, <coughs> uh, tool to design uh, kick drums and why? Whether you're watching this live or if you're just watching the replay, please let us know with a comment below. And uh, let me take, uh, just say, this is beautiful, we've got so many people. Let me say hi to Artem, to Yamada. Let me say hi from... Um, uh, hey, hello from Ukraine. Fantastic. 
And I just want to take one more question from um, YouTube. <clears throat> and Antonio Desiderio asks, Hello guys, my question is, why compress in stages? Why compressing in stages is good? Ooh -hoo. All right, so I promised I would touch on this, and um, here we go. <clears throat> Well, firstly, I will I, I will let actually Aaron re, re, reply why compression compression compressing in stages uh, is good, and I will uh, uh, and I'll just give my own contribution saying gain staging is 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 part of this equation, and you don't pretty much you don't want to be too loud going into plugins channels uh, because uh, because you know y you get you get more wiggle room <clears throat> if you have a little bit of Headroom. Some of the plugins don't like to be blasted with uh, levels into it. Some of the real gear definitely doesn't like to be blasted with volume into it. Uh, so gain staging, and to me is when you're starting your mix down, have uh, the sum of all of the tracks not to exceed <coughs> minus 12 peak on the master bus. Generally speaking, we have a an entire uh, mixing course about it. It's called the Official Guide to Mixing. There is a link in the description. You can check on that. But now, Aaron, why is it important to compress in stages? Are we talking just on the kick drum or are we talking across the full mix? I would say, I would say just uh, across the full mix right. in general and why that is p particularly important for kick drum. Why you want to compress in stages? Well, firstly, if you push any piece of gear beyond a certain point, if you push it too far, it doesn't, it distorts and it creates saturation, usually, unless it's like a really clean stock compressor. Uh, the other point is, if you get, if you enhance your kick drum attack with the compressor on the kick drum channel, then you do some parallel compression to uh, sort of reinforce the core. Those are doing two different things. So when they add together in your drum bus, and then you've got your kick drum it's usually the kick drum that's triggering your drum bus compressor. That's going to move the whole kit in time with that kick drum. And then again, when you're on the mix bus, you're going to probably be moving your whole mix and it's going to help everything push and pull at the same time, which is how you create a lot of impact across your mix. That That's very nicely put, actually. That's greatly put. Um, <coughs> and... Uh, m uh, uh, my version, my simple version is, is if you want to kick, uh, uh, to compress the kick drum like uh, six, seven dBs at the end of the uh, at the end of the mix, it's better if you have uh, five plugins or mm. five compressors to do one um, one dB of reduction each, rather than have just mm. one plugin do the whole five. So and it's it's a and and yeah, of course. Aaron is a lot more eloquent than me and said it right <laughs> a lot better. And um, Dom, any any words of wisdom? Well, I think it's unless you you're trying to achieve like a very particular effect, you you, uh, you know you should never just go too far with any compressor. It doesn't have to be you know we're talking about plugins, but even hardware, yeah. you know, uh, machines they they don't like like to be push to the limits maybe even more so for hardware yes say. exactly um but you know some people like to kind of oh, okay let's drive it so we can saturate it but exactly if you're trying to get this saturation that's fine but like i i, I don't i don't know how to say it if eight out of ten cases you don't want that you want to have the, the compressors are there to do a job mm. um they're not there to always be creative. The, the, their main purpose is to do something else. We just, you know, we're just uh, really fond of them. We like them, but people just forget that. Okay, what does a compressor do? Why does it help me? Um, you know, why do I want to use it? So again, many stages. Also, if you do it in many stages, you can get a d very different color from every compressor. So you can add like uh, maybe like a very fast compressor to get like this this attack. Um, accentuated and then maybe you want to add a little bit uh, like a bus compressor like an API or maybe an SSL to make the sound a little bit more you know compact maybe then you want to add another one because you want to have a, this specific color that it adds to the sound maybe it adds a little bit of saturation maybe, maybe a little bit of uh, low end maybe a bump in the low frequency that you want to get you know and, and then parallel compression is a, an entirely different thing mm. so uh, yeah I mean I've 
a very common mistake is to just squash your kick drum, just completely make it disappear and make it thin. That's what happens when you use one single compressor that compresses a lot. The two things I'd like to add to that very quickly, because Dom just brought that up, is um, one of them is if you're compressing in stages. I've done a few mixed critiques for people where I've gone through their sessions and they have compressed in stages, but they haven't paid attention to the the different attack and release times of the compressors that they're using. So they're using multiple different compressors in a row on the same source, mm. and they end up sort of fighting each other in terms of movement, so they don't move smoothly together. So it's very important to pick one once they work together well, which have sort of keys of times. The other point is it's always really important to know why you're compressing. So if you're compressing, don't just compress something for the hell of it. Think, why am I going to do this? Am I looking to enhance the mm. attack? Do I want to bring down the sustain? It, do I want to saturate it? If you're going to saturate it, push the compressor as far as you want, but know with the intention that that's what you want to do. Like what Claudio said in the beginning, if you have a 909 sound or an 808, just just l let it be. Clip don't, it. Don't, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it because it's it. that's, what you that's, that's the sound you want. Mm. Otherwise, just create a different sound or yeah. just synthesize it in a way that it works with your track. I don't see why you would compress an 808. Just get an 808 or an emulation of 808 as in a plugin and just change the decay if you want mm. it longer. Don't compress it, you know, unless you go for a very weird, very different sound. You, you want to experiment, but yeah. yeah. So. Fantastic. Well, I think we hit the one hour mark, so it's, I guess, time for us to wrap this up. Um, uh, all I want to say Already? is, oh, wow. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, time flies. Um, I don't know if we have, um, um, I don't know if we have time for one more question, maybe quickly. I don't know. Uh, Dom, do you want to take s any, any more questions I'm from there? I'm trying to, yeah. Um, Did you have any in mind, Claudia? Or? Um, no, I mean, okay. it's, uh, I've, I've seen, um, I mean, there were quite Not a few. Quite right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, should I uh, send kick uh, through the rear bus? I wouldn't send the kick through the river bus. Uh, river bus. I would uh, if you're gonna add um, some reverb to the kick, Ymir. I would uh, give it its own dedicated reverb. And um, yeah, unless he means um, sort of as a global reverb to glue everything together. In which case, I wouldn't send the kick individually. I would send the kit. Yes, and only a little bit of it. And yes. filter your reverbs, EQ your reverbs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe one last thing that we can say before we go. I mean, uh, you know, don't forget that if you're doing electronic music or even if you want to reinforce your acoustic kick drums and you'll probably have a, you know, a, a kind of a subtractive synthesizer in your DAW, pretty much you can find so many free ones as well if you don't, if you haven't bought one yet. Um, you don't underestimate that you can create your own kick drums on a synthesizer um so w this is great because it will give you your own voice you will have your own custom kick drums that nobody else has um you know you can create your own so you can create the kick drums exactly the way you want them to be uh for example just a very quick example that we have right here is um this is like the retrolog 2 um uh, that comes with Cubase, and this is like a subtractive synthesizer. As you can see, w it's it's very easy to build a kick drum on a subtractive synthesizer. So this is this is no samples. This is just it comes straight out of the synth, and I can of course completely change it, change the filter envelope, tune it exactly so that it resonates well with my track. See then, it, you can tell that it's a synth. But if you make it, uh, if you basically remove the sustain uh, from the notes uh, on the filter and the amplitude envelope, you all you end up is a kick drum. Of course, you have to tune it low. You have to add your sub oscillator. But you know, this is something that you, you can create like so many kick drums with just one synth, and then you can layer them with acoustic kick drums, and you can create like hybrid kick drums. 
this is so you know uh, so many people do that and they create like these super kicks that you know you you hear on tracks and like that's a very very punchy kick drum i think i think quincy jones used to do that a lot he was uh, w when he was working with michael jackson um you know he would get like of course the acoustic kick drum then he would layer it with something else or uh, of course he would do that with bass as well so you have the acu the electric bass and then he would layer maybe one note Billie Jean uh, with right. a synth a saturated synth so in order to get this low end because you couldn't get it with the uh, electric bass so yeah. the same thing goes with kick drums you know just try and create your own you know take some time you know, if you're interested, you know, just let us know. Maybe we'll do like a tutorial about this, how to create kick drums on a synthesizer. You know, just let us know, give us ideas, and um, yeah, we'd we'll be happy to yes. do something for it. Sounds fantastic. Well, so what I want to say is thank you uh, for uh, tuning in. If you are watching this on the replay, please hit us with your uh, rep with your comments. We'll still reply to them. And uh, don't forget to visit us on drmix.com. We are right here in the middle of London. We are loving the vibe. We are very grateful for for your attention. And um, guys, do you want to say goodbye? Bye, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. And, see you uh, soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. see you soon. Bye. <laughs>